plaintiff, Lamont Beeson, says he and the defendant live in the same building. And they met when Lamont bought some pot from him. However, Lamont's suing because he claims he dropped an envelope with $500 in it and the defendant stole it. Defendant Lionel Coleman says he and Lamont were cool at first and often smoked together. But then Lamont flipped the script on him and falsely accused him of theft. He's countersuing for defamation of character. Start with you. Your Honor, just a little bit of history. I live in a senior building and I've been there about eight years. And everybody in this building knows me, knows who I am, you know, and it's mostly, well, they're all seniors. And, Why are you there? Uh, I moved in about 54 and I got hurt seriously bad on the okay, job. Okay, disability. So disability, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Okay. And Mr. Coleman has been living there about a year, maybe two years, I'm not for sure. Uh, how I met Mr. Coleman, I bought some weed from him. Mm -hmm. And... It was parsley, so I just pretty much never... You didn't buy any weed from him. I didn't get high. I'll just put it like that. Well, rag weed. From yes, sir. So, oh, yeah. you know, I tried it out. It wasn't a thing or anything like that. And Mr. Coleman actually comes knocking on my door from time to time wanting to borrow money, you know, from me. And things of that rag nature. Rag weed wouldn't sell. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> and... I see him in passing, we nod, what's happening, that's it, something like that. Brag weed. Yes, sir. So, you know, I tried it out, it wasn't a thing or anything like that. And Mr. Coleman actually comes knocking on my door from time to time wanting to borrow money, you know, from me. And things of that Brag nature. Brag wouldn't sell. <laughs> Evidently. Plaintiff Lamont Beeson is suing his neighbor because he claims the defendant stole an envelope he dropped, which had $500 in it. Now, the building you live in, doesn't it have a community room or something, or a cafeteria? Or yes, it does, Your Honor. You all never see each other there and talk, no, or do I, you associate I, down there? No, sir, I'm not one to, uh, I don't really get involved in a lot of functions, but I do contribute mm -hmm. to whatever they have. The last one they had, it was outside barbecue. I got. Four things of brats, gave it to him. Hey, that's my contribution. Okay. $20 here, you know, I don't. Okay, I was just wondering if you all socialized no, during no, those no, times. No, sir. No, sir. Not at all. Okay. So I had been hearing things about Mr. Coleman, but I didn't pay no attention that he, you know, crackhead. And there's many crackheads in the building and things like that. But I ain't thinking about, you know, anything like Somebody that. Somebody alleged that about him? They alleged it. And then I got crackheads that told me that. So okay. <laughs> I've been knowing them, so I believe... Why do you know so many crackheads? Because they live in the building. I know the people, right. Your Honor. I've been there eight years. I know some of the no, people... Most do... of the people you know on crack. Your Honor, I don't really even associate with anybody in that building. You just Honor. said all your buddies are on crack and they all told you Honor, that they smoke I, crack with your, him. Your Honor, I didn't like say... Like y'all used... You didn't, I didn't say, say all that? I didn't say about any of my buddies oh. being on crack. I thought you said my buddies are I said, all on I, crack. I, I they said, told I, me he was, and they said he's on crack just like we used to be. I never said my buddies, Your Honor. They're just people. Well, who was on crack? These are just people I know in How the you building. Just know them? <laughs> These are people I know. They used to be good friends. I mean, coming out the back door, doing different things, I see. I doing mean, things like what? Going to cars, getting out of cars, coming back and forth, things of that nature. And what they're doing, it's their business. That ain't my thing, Your Honor. That's not my thing. You don't smoke crack with that. No, no, never. Never. Promise. Promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, that's not me. You know an awful lot of crackheads in the building. <laughs> yes, sir, I do. I've been there eight years. <laughs> I'll give you the test. It's 200, it's 200 people in the building, Your Honor. Let me know if you see him sweating or shaking. He's looking a little shiny now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he came look at it. <laughs> 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 
You know, if you come here, y'all who come here acting all stiff and serious, yeah. I ain't gonna let y'all do that to my show. People be turning the channel. Really? Um, well, Your Honor, I'm just answering your questions, Your Honor. <laughs> no, sir. Lying. You're either going to lift this up or I'm going to lift it up. <laughs> I'm help. Lift it on up, sir. I'm ready for it, Judge. <laughs> you sure are. <laughs> I'm ready for it, Judge. You sure are. You've been doing well. <laughs> All right. And give me some background, sir, on uh, your uh, association and living there in the building. Well, he seemed that when we met, he was pretty cool and everything like that. And we smoked. And um, all of a sudden, he flipped the script on me. Yeah, you should brought that bad weed over. I would too. You bring me some. I bad didn't even weed. sell him no weed. Speaking too. What I never you know? sold him no weed, Your Honor. Anyway, you say y'all smoked together. We no, smoked, no, but we I didn't give smoked. him any. You know, sell him any. Your Honor, we never sold. And you gotta sell it. If we smoke it and you bring me some rag weed, I'm not speaking to you anymore. So maybe that's why he's lying, because he's mad. Well, I might lie on you, too. <laughs> and stop speaking. That's a bad thing. Yes. That's why yes. the man ain't spoke to you. Yeah, but uh, I didn't sell him none. We smoked it. Go and, ahead. Uh, I'm thinking, I think he's on crack. Because <laughs> for him to be accusing me of stealing <laughs> is out of character for him. And uh, he knows a lot of crackheads. Because he just stated that. I never did crack. Well, you're on the list, too. You know. You're on my list. You're on my list. He acts like he's on crack because the way he acting, sweating, you know what I'm saying? That's me. And, That's just and, me, a little and nervous. for him to I mean, know anything me. about it, he have to be around him to smoke it to try to say somebody that is on it. Well, it's mighty funny. So he trying to put me in his shoes. It's mighty funny that I keep money. I don't knock on I anybody's never store, no not money even from for a this cup of sugar. Man. I've been there eight years. Not even for, I've never knocked on anybody's door. He this said you knock on many doors. Times. No, I don't knock on man. doors, Your Honor. That's just a lie. You never knocked on his door trying to no, borrow sir. money. You're no, sir. No, Your Honor. You're I not have man. never knocked on his door. Somebody's You're not a man. Somebody is on crack. You're not a man. That's him. That ain't me, Your Honor. I'm I don't even drink. And plus, I'm nobody... playing with you guys. Y'all <laughs> brought crack in, so yeah. you know I'm going to have a ball with that. <laughs> That's nobody... all I try and laugh about. And number two, I don't believe neither of you all are using it. I tease a lot of people about crack now mm. because there's not as much crack devastation as there was. It's now, unfortunately, pills and heroin. But uh, I hope you all aren't one of the last holdouts. Mm. Holdout crack here. Y'all not holdout crackheads, are you? No, sir. No, folks are. just refuse to go to the next level. No, y'all. Right. <laughs> so on the next level. Yeah, but I, I've been there. Yeah. I've been. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. No, y'all. No, no. But I've been there. I've been there a year, about a year and a half. I, I just speak to everybody. I don't deal with nobody there. How these people? He gonna sit up and lie and say that people saying that I use crack. Your Honor, that's you know? a lie. And and I know he's lying. Your because Honor, he's a compulsive a liar. He the one need help. I think you need help. Get help. Stop being a compulsive liar. Don't use me for a crutch. To whatever the motive is that you doing. You know, it ain't cool. I'm here to prove that you're a you liar are, and a thief. Sir. That's the only reason why I'm here. Plaintiff Lamont Beeson is suing his neighbor because he claims the defendant stole an envelope he dropped, which had $500 in it. Let's move on. Yeah, he need his eight ball, 500. They go for 500 now? <laughs> I do not know, you <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> five, I do not eight know. Eight balls went up but, to 500. All right. But Tell me if, how he owes if, you this if five. If my ex thought I was even doing something like that, she wouldn't give me a nickel. Yeah, believe me, I know drug addicts when I see and hear them. And so unless y'all knew drug addicts, then uh, I don't believe that about either. No, y'all. you all were drug addicts deep into it, I would know. All right, and tell me about this money you're suing him for, the $500, what happened? Yes, Your Honor. On this particular day, 224, I, my ex came and uh, said she was dropping off some money for me. And when she pulled up into the circle, she handed it through the passenger window. And normally, when she loans me money, she gives me a check. And I really didn't think anything about it. I'm with you. Why does his ex have to normally loan him money? 
because how I does he have to loan him? Sound like a crackhead to me. Because huh? no, because like normally I loan her money. Irresponsible. I've been with the woman since 1988. But why she has the regularly? It's not regularly. Give you money. It is not regularly, Your Honor. Go ahead. It is not regularly. When she does loan me money, it's normally in a check. On that particular day when she handed it to me, I put it in my right pocket. I saw a gentleman that I know, at the passenger, he had a truck and he was getting things out of his truck. I said, oh, bro, you need some help with that? Because I know he'd been sickly. He said, oh, my, I got this, I got this. I turned around and said, okay, his wife was in the front seat and they're in the truck, she's sitting up. I talked to her a little bit and stuff, then a wind hit me. So I said, well, I got to get in here. Win. So I go into the building. Now, Your Honor, you have to picture, in our building, you have to go through two doors. And the last door you go through, you have two elevators, two big ones, and one very, very small elevator. It had to be, I'm not exaggerating, nine to 12 people, I really can't remember, we're all standing in front of these elevators. This gentleman is in the back and came through the last doors. Now we're all standing. The small elevator came. Now you think you would let two of them little ladies get on that elevator and just go on up. This gentleman ran to that little small elevator. Now I have a wagon as well as he does, a fold up one. But his is twice the size of mine. So to tell you the truth, I don't know how he got it in there and then himself, because I have a hard time with mine. <laughs> so when fine. he did that, and I know what's going on, I checked my pocket real quick, and then I went back outside real quick. And they said, well, dude came right behind you and just picked that up. He, and it was a folded envelope. He said, he opened it up. My name is on it. She wrote my name on it. And he said he looked in it. So I went and told her, went upstairs and said, cancel that check, cancel that check. She said, Lamont, that was all cash. I said, oh. Doggone it. You know, I told her. And after they told me they saw him pick it up, I had his number because he gave it to me if I wanted to buy some weed, which I had never used at all. And, you know, he says, no, no, that was my envelope. I dropped my envelope off my wagon. I picked it up. You know, that was my envelope. I didn't pick up, you know, anything of he yours. He said that he coincidentally dropped the envelope at the same time as you. He said it was on his wagon and it blew off or something on his envelope. And he insisted he hadn't picked up anything belonging to you. He said, yes, there was an envelope, but I'm the one that dropped that envelope. Correct. That's what he told you? That's what he said, correct. But the people were saying that he came behind me and picked it up. Plaintiff Lamont Beeson is suing his neighbor because he claims the defendant stole an envelope he dropped which had $500 in it. So it would either have to be two envelopes involved. Correct. Or he picked yours up. He picked my That's envelope. That's the only right. two scenarios we could have. He picked my envelope. All right, so let me hear from you on this. What happened? Okay, so I'm coming in with my little red wagon and um, I, I came from my daughter's house picking up some mail from her house because I still had mail coming to her house too. And so it was, uh, I had it on my wagon on top of this plastic bag. And uh, my credit card envelope, it was this long. He said his envelope was this small and it was folded. My envelope wasn't. I never then it told got you mad, the size it, then mud envelope. came on and I wiped it off. I never told you rolled the size in, of my envelope. Rolled in, <laughs> rolled in. He was not at the elevator when I got there. He was nowhere around. And I did not get on the small elevator because my wagon wouldn't fit on that small elevator. Your red wagon. My red wagon. So I got on the middle elevator, which is the medium. I Isn't went up. Pain? That I went didn't up. Come, cause and I was then, standing in front of the elevator. And then I elevator. put my stuff up, my groceries and stuff, and put it up. And then I filled out my credit card payment, and I went to the post office and mailed it. And then I get a call from the president of the building saying that, um, I didn't know his name was Lamont. So he said, uh, Lamont said that you picked up his envelope uh, and it had a credit card and a check in it. And I said, no, nah, if There's I would have no found that, card. I, I would have turned it into the office. From, Your Honor. So then I get a call before I came home 
then the president called me again and said it was a credit card and cash in there. I said, won't this guy make up his mind? That's a fib because I was know, standing on, right sir. there. Make up his mind what story he going to tell. Then the as truth. I get to my apartment, uh, he called me. And then I recognized who I was, who it was. So he said, man, you stole my money. And it was cash in there. I said, man, I ain't steal nothing, man. And don't call my house cussing me out and everything like that. You called me with a decent attitude, so I hung up on him. No, you didn't. Then the Tell next thing I know, oh, Lord. I'm gonna let you uh, the police came. And then public safety came. And then they said, I stole something. I said, I ain't steal nothing. Well, this man saying you stole his money. I said, I ain't steal none of his. When the police came, what happened? Well, John, I explained to them what happened, but they said, well, come on upstairs to your apartment. And let's talk. Tell me where things went from the talk. What happened after that? They told me to stay in my apartment because I was told. Okay, and what happened after that? I told them I was totally upset, and I said I'm going down there and take a whooping or. or Do you have a police report or something? I have I'm it. Trying I, to see I, what I, yes, did. sir. I need yes, some sir. Independent evidence. Yes, sir. Page three. Page three. And paragraph. Okay. Second from the last. Uh, I'll just start with this. Upon arrival, I spoke with the caller, Lamont, and advised me that he had gone out to the driveway and spoke with some residents. While he was turning around the back into the building, he dropped the envelope to contain $500. Advised that the resident, Lionel Coleman, had picked up the envelope after he had dropped it. Mr. Beeson, I went to apartment 405, this police officer saying, where the suspect, Mr. Coleman, resides. Mr. Coleman spoke to us and claims the envelope he picked up was the one that fell off his shopping cart as he was approaching the building. He has since mailed that envelope that was not dropped by anyone but himself. All right. And then, and I went on the camera system for the building to review the video. At approximately 1 p.m., Mr. Beeson is seen standing next to a vehicle. You're standing next to a vehicle that is off camera, but a white object is seen on the ground as Mr. Beeson is returning to the development. So you've dropped it and you're returning and the camera sees it on the ground. Mr. Coleman bends over and picks up that white object <laughs> as he approaches, pulling his cart behind him. Plaintiff Lamont Beeson is suing his neighbor because he claims the defendant stole an envelope he dropped, which had $500 in it. So they said they have you, sir, on tape. No, I picked up mine. They didn't see me. They didn't see me go past no sir, envelope. Sir, I tell you what they say they saw on camera, sir, and they spoke with. They you. saw me pick up an envelope. Yeah, they that was you my pick envelope. Up his envelope. <laughs> the camera saw you walk up and pick his up. That's what they said. The camera revealed. Additionally, they spoke with Connie. She had been seated in a car when the incident took place. She observed him drop something and Mr. Coleman why she didn't picked pick it, it up. up. She said she saw him drop it and saw you pick it up. If she saw she dropped it, Your Honor, then she why was, she didn't pick it up? She was in the truck. But she's she, not a thief. She, and, and I'm she's not, not a thief. on crack. And I'm not on crack either. I don't sir. know what you're on. Try that lightweight game on me. Don't nothing Who's insult that, me Honor? more than game from somebody who think they know the game and don't selling rag weed. Give me some good game and some good weed if you're going to come in here <laughs> acting Doggone like right. you in the game. Doggone right. That's yeah. against the man's code to do something like that. Tell him. Would you tell him? <laughs> no, I'm serious, Judge. We're in our 60s and stuff like that. It's unwritten codes. You know, for men, especially if he knows me, Your Honor, I would have hit his pocket, $50, $100. And then I even saw something where you said finders keepers. Did he you did. tell the police that? I said, if I would have found it, it would have been finders keepers losing a week. Uh, finders keepers. Go, that's go. what you believe the law is? No. Okay. But I was just saying that if I would have found it. And that's Your what claim I is dismissed. Yours is granted, sir. Good day to you. Thank you, Your Honor. He's full of This dude is full of And he's full I wouldn't lie, but you know what I told that officer? I'll go down there and get my Whoop or whoops. Well, we gonna be that's I'm exactly with you the game. Got I'm, a I'm old guy. I got all kind of elements and stuff like that. And you gonna keep them a elements. And I cost that's more. that's wrong. That's wrong. Man, you don't threaten nobody. I didn't threaten you. You did. You talking about you gonna kick my 
I told the officers that. They made okay, me, but you weren't man enough to come to me and made, tell me that. They made me stay in but my apartment. But just think about that and, before hey, you come to me and talk about you gonna whoop my I, I, I said I'm gonna your, 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 your,